This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so happy you joined me. Today is Tuesday, May 19th, 2020. It's a wonderful day to be alive, a wonderful day to share God's praises uh, and to sing His praises with all people. Uh, today we will be taking a look at Psalm 66, and I will be reading that here shortly. Uh, we're going to be doing daily prayer from the hymnal on page 295, if you are following along. Uh, I'll be doing a version of that, uh, of the morning prayer. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading for today is taken from Psalm 66. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There did we rejoice in him, who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us to the net. You laid a crushing burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. I will come into your house with burnt offerings, I will perform my vows to you, that which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fattened animals with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Thus far our text. In the name of Jesus, amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Psalm 66 is an interesting psalm because it gives reasons why all the earth should praise the Lord in any and every circumstance. You see, the Lord's work of salvation, culminating in ministry in the ministry of Christ, assures God's people that he will make all things, even hardships, work out for their ultimate good. Even though hardships may tempt us to abandon God, knowing that the Lord uses these hardships to test our faith can actually strengthen us to hold on to our faith. So now as we examine this psalm for our devotion, take a moment and add up all the reasons you should praise God. From the very beginning of our text, verses 1 to 4, all the earth is encouraged to honor God with songs of praise. After all, 
Those who knew of God's merciful forgiveness have much to say to God. The awesome works and the greatness of his power refer more to the Messiah's work of salvation than just to the miracles. For the Messiah, the Savior of the world, came to destroy death and redeem all people from sin. Notice all the earth should praise God because Jesus' sacrifice was for all creation. In this sense, all people from every nation should praise and honor the name of Jesus. In our next section, verses 5 to 7, we are asked to meditate on the work of God through the Exodus. If you'll remember, God set two million people free, people who are under the bondage of slavery in Egypt. Then verse 6 reminds the people how God even opened the Red Sea and allowed the Israelites to walk through across on dry land. Forty years later, God would do a similar miracle at the swollen Jordan River when the waters backed up and the children of Israel crossed over to the Promised Land. Once again, God was demonstrating his authority over nature and his power to save his people. Like the Israelites of old, God has made us his children by means of washing of water with the word. God parted the waters of our baptism, and we were cleansed from sin, and we were made heirs of eternal life. And at the end of our life, God will carry us through death, across the Jordan, and into his eternal promised land. Verses 8 to 12 of Psalm 66, speak about God's gracious providence, even during times of affliction. Verse 8 in particular, calls on God's people to bless him who has kept our soul among the living. Beginning in verse 10, we are reminded how God has tested us, tried as silver, bringing us into the net, laying a crushing burden on our backs, and letting men ride over our heads. In Hebrews chapter 12, we are told that such testing can be difficult at first. We may even wonder how we're going to survive. It is verse 12 reminds us, though we went through trials of fire and water, God has brought us out to a place of abundance. In other words, God often uses the trials of life to burn off impurities and to make our faith stronger. Therefore, we also shall loudly praise God, even for the difficult times. I realize that this sounds counterintuitive, but the Bible says God is using these times for our good. He often uses difficult times to bring us closer to Him. In verses 13 through 15, The psalm writer gives the reader an example of what he will do to praise God. Here the writer states that he will go to God's house, perform his vows, that is, confess his name, and will offer sacrifices of praise to the Lord. Finally, verses 16 through 20, call on people to listen to what God has done in answering prayer and forgiving sin. The psalmist writes in verse 18, If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Here the psalmist observes that the Lord listened to his prayer not because of his worthiness, but purely out of God's own steadfast love. This interpretation is confirmed in verses 19 and 20, where God's mercy and love is demonstrated in the fact that God listens and does not reject the psalmist's prayer. So, did you add up all the reasons you should praise God? The psalmist found many reasons, even during difficult times. Today, we are in a difficult time, as illness has affected many aspects of our lives. Yet there is reason to praise God for his goodness, even during this virus. It is my hope and prayer that you, like the psalmist, are given the ability to see clearly 
through these challenging times and witness the goodness of God. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Would you join me now in prayer? O Lord, with the psalmist, we praise you for your glory and might and the works of your hands. You have taken away the covering of death that was over all people through the resurrection of your Son. He took our sins and bore them to the cross that we might be your children through faith. We pray that you would look with mercy on your creation and end this pandemic that has affected all nations. Continue to grant wisdom and courage to our leaders and strengthen those who risk themselves on our behalf. We pray that you will restore our economy and end the disruption that has come to so many. Continue to keep us and those we love in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join with me now as we pray Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining me for this daily devotion. I pray that you are healthy, that you are doing well. And until next time, God bless you.